Ladies and gentlemen on the Shred Gaming Telecom video, let's discuss DirectX 12, shall we? Because it is, of course, a flagship for Windows 10, and for many it's going to be the reason that they're going to upgrade. Because, of course, Microsoft have announced that DirectX 12 is going to be exclusive for Windows 10. In other words, if you've got Windows 7 and you have no wish to upgrade to Windows 10, then you're going to be in a bit of trouble because you simply won't be able to run the DX12 API on older versions of Windows. Who knows if there's going to be a way of modding or hacking that in the future, but for now we're just going to have to go with the assumption that that's not going to be the case. So what about performance, what about hardware, and what about the p potential future you know, of what DirectX can bring? <clears throat> well, regarding the hardware, the good news is that if you've got a modern day gaming GPU, you're probably okay. So that would be a Fermi. Um, so, in other words, a GTX 460, 470, in other words, the 400 range from NVIDIA. They haven't really said much about AMD, but there's a very good chance it would be anything that's GCN-based, um, you're probably perfect with. So, for example, a 7970, 7950, something like that. Um, an R9 card, obviously, like an R9 280 or something like that, you're also good. Um, I'm... Obviously, they haven't announced all of the cards yet, but that's looking the way it's going. So what about performance? Well, there's still some information that's coming out. But the big thing here is that DirectX 12 is supposedly going to give up to about 50% improvement in performance for certain games, for certain situations. Now, the reason behind this is Phil Spencer believes that DirectX 12 is going to give you a lot more fine control over the CPU and GPU. And of course, you're going to get much better rendering and draw calls from the CPU to send to the GPU. But, that doesn't necessarily mean that the performance is going to go up 50%. Because A, it depends on the game. Um, for example, let's say you're playing Limbo. Yes, it looks quite pretty. But let's face it, you're not really going to get 50% extra performance uh, from that game just by adding a few draw calls. And of course, it also depends how developers use it. But the other thing, of course, it kind of goes with the hardware. So in other words, if your game is GPU bound, let's just assume that you're running a Fermi GTX 460 with an i7-4770K that's overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz with 16 gigabytes of RAM. You're trying to run that at 1440p or something similar. You're not going to get 50% increase in performance because you're just quite simply bound by the GPU. It doesn't matter if the CPU can speak to the game or sorry, speak to the GPU faster. The GPU is just like, eh, eh, I'm out. Sorry, I'm doing the best I can here. You could tell me to work faster. It's just not going to make a difference, bro. But the good news is, obviously, Intel have shown off various impressive demos. They've shown that one off at SIGGRAPH 2014. <clears throat> and... Phil Spencer did say that for CPU-bound games, DirectX 12 will increase the performance of those games by up to 50%, which is really great, as I said. But what else? Well, not everyone is 100% excited about it. I know that might sound strange, but some developers are a little apprehensive. Um, I hopefully I'm pronouncing this person's name correctly, but I believe it's Shams Georgiani. Um, probably pronounce it incorrectly, but anyway, they are the VP of Acquisition Portfolio Strategy, and um, they are working at Paradox Interactive. And they didn't really sound super duper happy about it. I mean, yeah, they sound kind of, yeah, it could be kind of cool, but they also sounded rather indifferent, to be totally honest. They said, and I quote, DirectX 12 mainly means more advanced in graphics, which means another step up in a technological arms race some devs slash publishers enjoy participating in. And that's fine, as it leaves more room for us. The connoisseur's choice. What makes a Paradox game beautiful isn't necessarily the shaders, the tessellation, SSS, or other wizardry, just good old gameplay. Then again, we have a few games that do look pretty, so it's a win-win for us. Interesting way of looking at things, I suppose. Following on from this, I'm sorry, it's also been confirmed that, unsurprisingly, major engines, including the Unity engine, are going to be supporting DX12. Not a major surprise, but... Um, Phil Spencer did show a future mark game demo running on both DX11 and 12. Of course, DX11 could not handle the graphics, it simply stopped, but DX12 continued. 
But it's not really surprising, let's just be totally honest, that we're getting a situation where game engines now are starting to incorporate it. Obviously, you know, the guys at Epic and any of the id and any of these major studios or anyone that's really putting out game engines or 3D applications or benchmarking software and NVIDIA, basically anyone in that industry, they know roughly what's kind of going on in the background anyway. And obviously Microsoft have been working on DX12 for some time. It's not like something they just slapped together with two guys in a garden shed. So what are my thoughts on it? Well, it's too early to tell. I don't think it's going to revolutionize PC gaming. I don't think it's going to be this, like, you have, um, I don't know, this terrible PC that's suddenly going to be able to run everything in 4K. But what it will do is definitely improve performance. It will fix some of the major issues PCs have in performance, which is, to be honest, rendering. Um, basically draw calls and so on. And I've been through a lot of this stuff anyway. But suffice to say, the primary difference of DX12 and DX11 it's quite simple. It just allows the CPU to be able to better dispatch instructions to the GPU. It means that, let's say you've got a 4-core CPU, just for example, um, and let's face it, GP, uh, CPUs now are becoming increasingly multi-core, um, which could even help AMD, because one of the problems that AMD have is they typically have more cores than Intel, but their um, IPC, their basically performance per core is lower than Intel. So maybe it will help AMD, it's too hard to know. But of course we do know that AMD are working on a new uh, x86 architecture, which is something I actually didn't get around to reporting, but they are working on it. It was announced late last year. And they are not only working on it, supposedly we're gonna be seeing more information on that thing by the end of this year, early next. And it's looking to be pretty good from what I'm hearing. But anyway, Getting back to the main point, dragging myself back into position. The main point, it's going to be a large improvement for multi-core CPUs. The idea that let's say you've got a four-core CPU and each of those cores can much more effectively speak to the GPU. They can actually issue context, they can issue commands, they can issue draw calls. Maybe they'll be able to actually, you know, do a lot better things, basically. And that's kind of the thing. And who knows where we're going to be in two years' time? At the moment, the average CPU, you know, most people are running i3s and i5s, which have two, four threads, but that's not going to be the case in a couple of years' time. You know, CPUs are going to be becoming increasingly multi-threaded, and I do feel the game engines are really going to start stretching their legs, which is a good thing, obviously, for everyone involved. The other benefit, not necessarily for me as a PC gamer, Maybe for you, maybe you care more than I do. And that is, of course, we're going to be seeing a lower, uh, or rather, more power-efficient architectures. So what we've noticed, at least from um, the Surface protests, is that the CPUs are actually using less power, uh, which could be kind of cool. Not really something I care about on, like, a 600 or 700 or 800 watt desktop, but... Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it's, I suppose using less power is only a good thing anyway. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.